I'm back. I have been filming like crazy the last 48 hours. I think I've pumped out like four videos. I still have to edit them, but I'm pretty excited that I got the filming part out of the way. In case you're wondering, this is one of the looks that I filmed. I'm doing kind of a Valentine's Day series. Not gonna lie, I'm not a huge fan of Valentine's Day, but this isn't about me. So I've created some looks for you to wear on your hot dates for Valentine's Day. And I've also created a look for the single, not so down with Valentine's Day girl. But we're not talking about that today. I just wanted to point that out because my eyes are done and I have recorded this. So stay tuned for it, I believe next week-ish. Today I'm going to be talking about my favorite MAC eyeshadows and my favorite MAC blushes. And amongst those, I threw in a couple little extras that sort of fall into that category. But this is something I get asked all the time, and I know that when you go into a MAC store it can be a little bit overwhelming when you're looking at all the shades. So I've picked out some shades that I find I repurchase over and over again, and that I use a lot on myself and in my kit. In case you're wondering like why I'm wearing what I'm wearing, it's because I was looking through my eyeshadows and I noticed that two of the ones that I really love are pretty much done so I had to run out and go grab so I had to go out and uh, grab new ones for me to show you because you can't really tell what a color looks like when I'm showing you a little metal pan so let's get started I'm going to start out with the matte shades and work my way through the shimmers and then get into a few pigments because I just had to throw them in there. I purchased my MAC eyeshadows in the pan form because I like to store them in these. Kind of a better look at it. I've taken most of them out so I can show you, but this is magnetic and the eyeshadows just kind of stick to it. I believe you can only get these ones from the Pro Store or online, so keep that in mind. You could always just call your MAC store and ask if they have these ones. So the first eyeshadow is Wedge, and this is one of the ones I purchased tonight because I was completely out of it. It is a light brown shade, and it is very good as a transitional color. It's super light, it doesn't have any shimmer or sheen. If you're blonde like me, this is great for an eyebrow shade, and I use this on myself. Next I've got Cork, and I know that you're very familiar with this one because I think I've used it in every single tutorial. Um, I'll put Cork and Wedge next to one another so you can see the difference between the two. Cork is a little bit darker than Wedge and I also use this as a transitional color. If you've got a little bit of a darker brow, this is great for the brows as well. I really have a thing for light browns and transitional shades. Another brown shade is Espresso and this is gorgeous. It's like a chocolatey brown shade. And it goes really well with wedge and cork. This is great if you want to build up a light brown. Great for the crease, great for a smoky eye. Absolutely love it. This also acts as a great brow color for those brunettes out there. Next I've got Arc, and this is a brownish gray shade and it is absolutely gorgeous. Probably gonna say this for every single shade, so just bear with me, I'm in love with these. Super awesome for fall. I find that it's a very sophisticated shade. Then we have Scene, and this is kind of a light bluish gray. And Scene is one of my all time favorites. I used to wear this religiously, I think a few years ago, probably every single day. What I do is I just apply this to my entire lid, not including the brow bone, and then I put a little bit of mylar on the brow bone, a very light stroke of black eyeliner and some mascara and it really makes your eyes pop especially if you have blue eyes another sophisticated shade and I'll put it next to bark so you can see the difference this one's more bluish and this one is a little bit more browny kind of taupey like how much are you loving my descriptive words right now I feel like I need to pull up a thesaurus or something if your skin tone is a little bit darker, you can still wear this. You can even darken it up a little bit with Carbon, and that's actually the next shade that I'm gonna talk about. Carbon is a very jet black eyeshadow. It is completely matte, extremely pigmented, so I use this very sparingly. I broke mine, so I'm a little bit upset about it. This is really great in powder form, but it can also be turned into an eyeliner using MAC's Fix Plus. 
So just spray a little bit on your brush and then dip it into the eyeshadow and it'll almost turn into an eyeliner. Another thing you can do is you can wet your brush just slightly and do a cut crease or really focus on the edge of your eye and build up the smokiness with it. So many different purposes for this. This is another popular one that you've probably noticed me using in almost every tutorial, and this is Mylar. This is a great base shade, but it's also an amazing brow bone shade. I clean up around the eye a lot with this one. I go through it like crazy. If I didn't have Mylar, I don't know what my life would be. Then I've got Gesso, or Gesso, Gesso. So this is a crisp, solid white shade, completely matte, extremely pigmented, and I also like to use this on the brow bone, except I focus right underneath my brow hairs. Now onto the more shimmery shades. This is another one that I finished that I had to run out and purchase, and this is my pan. It's called Nylon, and Nylon is a really beautiful, very light, creamy yellow shade. It has a shimmer sheen to it, but it's not glittery. Absolutely gorgeous on all skin tones. You can mix this into other shades. You can apply this to the whole lid and then blend matte shades into it. Very pretty in the tear ducts. Just an overall gorgeous shade. If I had to recommend purchasing four eyeshadows from MAC, if you're a beginner, the shades I would recommend would be Nylon, Mylar, Carbon, and depending on your skin tone, either Espresso, Cork, or Wedge. Because I find with those four shades, you can basically build up anything. And obviously, if you don't like shimmers, you can replace nylon with one of the browns, but for the most part, I find these six shades can basically create any sort of neutral look. Next, I've got Retrospec. And Retrospec differs from nylon in the sense that there's actual little glitter particles inside the shadow. It's a very subtle, fine milled glitter, but it makes a world of a difference when you're applying it to a look. I've actually got a little bit of Retrospec at the front of my look here, and it completely just glamorizes the whole thing and pulls it together. It's more on the white gold creamy end, whereas nylon is more yellowish. And these are the two next to one another. Again, this is a great shade on all skin tones, great for bridal, and you can incorporate it into any look. Another thing I want to mention is that you can use this wet, and when it is wet, it's much more pigmented, and it just gives a very glamorous kind of shine to your eyelid, so highly recommend this. Next, I've got another shimmery shade. It's a little bit more glittery than Retrospec, and this is Idolize. And this is kind of like a gray silver bordering a cool blue. There's definitely a little hint of lavender or something in this. Again, it applies beautifully when it's wet. So if you apply some Fix Plus to your brush and then dip it in the shadow, it is to die for. Another reason I like this is because it's not too silvery. I personally am not a super huge fan of silver shades. I do have a silver shade in my kit, but I prefer this one over any silver because it's got a little bit of a cool tone to it. When applying it, I would recommend to have a very good base, so a primer or a paint pot, anything that'll help adhere it a little bit more because there can be a lot of fallout with it. Okay, so this next shade is actually the love of my life and there's no real words to describe just how sexy this eyeshadow is, but it's club. And if you're familiar with Club, it is like sex in an eyeshadow pan. It is a brownish green kind of iridescent fish scale shade. It's definitely got some red undertones and it's got, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. It applies kind of brown, but then as you kind of tilt your head or as the light hits your eyes, it changes into kind of like a greenish shade. Works amazing on all skin tones. I've used this so many times when I've done boudoir makeup and boudoir is very like glamorous, kind of smoky eye, really sexy and sultry. That's what I would say this is, sexy and sultry. Like I feel super sexy when I'm wearing this. And while I'm discussing this, I'm just gonna grab one of the loose pigments that I wanna talk about because it's very similar to this and it's called blue brown 
and this is it right here. It's kind of like the loose form of club almost, but way more pigmented. And although it says blue brown, I feel like it's kind of like bluey green brown. I highly recommend you go to a Mac store and play with these. They are to die for. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's my favorite Mac shade, and that's that. And lastly, I thought I'd throw in a little bit of color into the mix because everything's been matte or neutral tones, but this is actually a very great shade for all skin tones and I have it on my eyelid right now. It's actually just above my crease. I've blended it upwards towards the brow bone and it is expensive pink. This is a corally, shimmery pink shade. It blends like a dream and it looks absolutely gorgeous with browns, even on its own, it's so pretty. If you're kind of weirded out by gold shades or gold tones and you want something a little bit warmer, I would probably try out expensive pink. It's been one of my favorites since I was a teen. Even before I was a makeup artist, this was one of the first eyeshadows I ever owned. So I definitely recommend this if you want to throw a little bit of color into your look, but you're kind of hesitant and you don't really know what to go with. So now that we've got those eyeshadows out of the way, I've got two more pigments that I want to talk about. The first one is Blonde's Gold. And this one is a very light, goldy, light brown shade. It's got a little bit of shimmer, but it works beautiful as a base. Fabulous for bridal makeup. Very good for every day. Super natural. Super natural. Sounds like a superhero, because it is. If you're weirded out by pigments, this is definitely a good place to start. And then I've got a loose pigment, and this is a Reflect. And basically what that is, is a finely milled glitter. And this one is an antique gold. Just as a disclaimer, these pigments and Reflex and glitters are to die for, not only because they're super pigmented and they work very well wet, but because they literally last an eternity. Like, I don't even think I'll live to finish this. This antique gold is pretty self-explanatory. It's a very dark, smoky gold shade super pigmented and strong if you use it wet. I'm wearing a little bit of it right now and you'll see me use it in one of my tutorials next week. With a lot of these, you'll have to obviously go play with them in the store, but this one is definitely a huge recommendation from me to you. Okay, what the hell? I have a Mac on this side of me and an HP laptop on this side of me and the HP just turned on by itself but it's closed. What? Where was I? Blushes. My favorite MAC blushes. Even if you're going for a really muted look, I think blush completely enhances a look and adds life, dimension, and all things amazing to the face. So I'm going to start out with the mineralized blushes, and there are two in particular that I live for. The first one is Dainty. It is a light pinky peach shade, and if you're familiar with the mineralized blushes, they are mineral, so they do have shimmer, but man, do these look gorgeous on the skin. I don't care what skin type you are and what skin tone, the mineralized blushes are unlike anything I've ever tried before. Awesome for spring, completely adds life, and glow to your cheeks. And then we've got, honestly, the most beautiful blush I have ever owned in my entire life on this planet. This is Gentle, and it is also a mineralized blush. It is absolutely beautiful on deeper skin tones, as well as fair skin tones. I know that at first glance, if you're fair, you're like, what? Honestly, if you blend this out, you can totally pull it off, even if you're porcelain skinned. For my fellow fair skinned friends, have no fear, blend it out out and whatever rhymes with fear. Now I'm going to talk about the regular pan blushes and I'm going to start out with Style. This is a very light peachy shade. It has a lovely shimmery sheen to it. It's almost kind of like bordering fluorescent peach. I find this is awesome for spring and summer. Beautiful on fair skin. Very beautiful on deeper skin tones. It almost acts like a highlight. And if you do have deeper skin, you can actually use Ambering Rose and kind of define your cheekbones and then use Style on top as a highlight if you're going for the more peachy look. 
So since I just mentioned this, I might as well go over it. This is Ambering Rose, and it's kind of like a copper peach shade. If you're fair and you wear it light enough, you can totally pull it off. But again, if your skin is medium to deep, then you can also layer this, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Everyone's got their own preference and, you know, not everybody's into the peachy coppery shades, but if you are, I would definitely try this out. Now onto some matte shades. This is Breath of Plum and it is a really nice light plummy shade. Gorgeous for blondes, gorgeous for brunettes. I would say you can pull it off if you've got fair to medium skin tone. If you have a deeper skin tone, I would say to go for Dirty Plum and this is kind of a darker version of Breath of Plum on the mauve kind of bluish side. And then I've got Pink Swoon, which is a super bright, almost kind of neon pink. And this just speaks for itself. It's very baby doll, it's very pretty. Again, it looks great on all skin tones. You can even mix it with other blushes and create your own custom shade. With blushes in general, it's all about how you blend them and where you place them. So don't be scared if you see something bright and fluorescent like this. They're always so much fun to try out, so I would definitely recommend this. And last but not least, I've got Prism, and this is a matte nude. This is great for blush, and it is also amazing for contour. I use this as a contour shade, and sometimes if I feel like I want to do a really muted look, then I'll use this as a blush. I'm very picky with nude blushes, but this is one of my favorites. I think there's one called Taupe, which is very close to it, so definitely check that out as well. Okay, last product, and I'm mentioning this because I use it a lot in my tutorials, so I figure I might as well throw it in. It is part of the Mineralize line, and it is the Mineralize Skin Finish in Soft and Gentle. This is a fabulous highlight, very multi-purpose. You can use it as a highlight, you can use it as an eyeshadow. I highly recommend this for anybody who is looking for a highlight but doesn't want the really frosty look. It gives a very beautiful glow to the skin, and again, I have used this on all skin tones. If your skin tone is deeper, I believe there's a deeper shade of this. I can't think of it on the top of my head, but I'll list it on my website with this. And you can always go for that one. But so far, I've just been using this one, and if I do need to darken it, then I'll just kind of mix it with anything else I have to deepen the shade. As you can see, there's several different shades running through this, and there's a little hint of gold in there, which is absolutely gorgeous on the skin. So if you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. It is one of my favorites. Whew. I am parched. I'm probably gonna go guzzle down, like, two glasses of water because I feel like I've been talking forever because I have. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. These are completely my picks. It's so hard to narrow down MAC eyeshadows. Honestly, I have so many and I go through them so much. I just kind of had to narrow it down to the few that I use the most. Let me know your favorites in the comments below. I would love to know which ones you use on a regular basis. Maybe we have some in common. I hope I didn't talk your ear off even though I probably do every single time. To everybody that has requested this video, thank you so much for requesting it. It was a very good idea and I feel like I might have helped some of you out in your choices of eyeshadows. Stay tuned for a bunch of Valentine's Day looks, including this one. And holy crap, not even two weeks until The Walking Dead. If you have any other requests for videos, you can leave them in the comments below. I will list everything I talked about on my website with this video. I hope you're having a really magical day. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Mwah.